So um, Jarvis doesn't like LA. Well, he does not. <laughs> why? Why? What's wrong with LA? Uh, what's 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 right with LA? I think in Jarvis' <laughs> world, uh, it's too hot. Have you seen this suit? This suit's okay now because it's November. But this suit, when we started shooting at the beginning of September, was misery, misery. Uh, I think the writers did it to me on purpose. In fact, I'm absolutely certain they spent half a day unable to write. They were so gleefully enjoying the fact that they were going to put me in a three-piece woolen suit in the middle of summer, in the middle of a heat wave as well. Uh, what else doesn't he like about it? You've seen the scene where I talk about what yeah. exactly I think about it. Yeah. I mean, that was, by the way, just a number of pictures of what we could have said. <laughs> reasons not to like Los Angeles. I, by the way, I personally like LA very much, just to create that little separation there. Would you like to ask you the real name of the flamingo? Uh, well, okay. Trade secret. In the pink box, there was actually no flamingo. That because... Uh, I think they worried that the, the flamingos are very unsteady on their feet. I think they worried with the braking and accelerating that the flamingo would not last very long. So, uh, but there were four flamingos, uh, as they told me, ranging uh, in um, aggressive natures from quite mild to psychotic. Uh, and the and the nicest one was called Simon. Uh, uh, and then the one that was a uh, menace to society was called Cannibal. Uh, and, can and Cannibal, I, so I, they sort of, we had to do this scene where I had to um, chase the flamingo around and, and maybe be chased by the flamingo and, and it all looked very funny on paper and then I sort of arrived and said, just checking. It's not dangerous with a, I mean it's a flamingo, right? It's not dangerous. And they went, oh yeah. Oh yeah, cowboy, that thing will take your eyes out. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then the, the, one of the, they kept calling me, by the way, the handlers kept calling me cowboy, which did not inspire confidence. <laughs> uh, th and so the girl put her arm out and, and Cannibal just went to town. It's like pecking away like a maniac. And so I thought, this is, this is, this is worrying. And then, and then it turned out that Flamingo, that the Flamingo, that Cannibal really liked me. And Cannibal sort of refused to peck me, uh, or chase me, or be chased by me. Cannibal, <laughs> Cannibal just wanted a hug. Uh, but then as soon as the handlers came back in, Cannibal went nuts again. Um, so um, we had to have them sort of stand off camera, so that they would either run away from them or towards them. Um, poor Cannibal. <laughs> I think he was pretty happy when his day was over. <laughs> We, uh, we're going to meet Jarvis's wife, obviously, this yes. season in the flesh. So what's it been like after season one? It was kind of all on you to carry the relationship. What's it like now to actually show that dynamic between the two of them? Well, uh, great. I mean, I think I, I, I probably said this before, but I, I thought that they had no intention of ever uh, reveal. I thought she was going to be like Niles' wife in Frasier. Yep. I thought you were never going to meet her. So I was absolutely thrilled that they've decided that that's... That there's a good reason for us meeting her as well. Not just because, it was funny that, you know, uh, uh, whenever I've been at one of those things where people are talking about this, but it's been a, people have been really interested in who she would be. It sort of caught people's imagination. So I was, I'm pleased for the audience in that regard, but actually she's, serves a very, very good, she's very, very good dramatically for the story that we're telling in season two. More than that, obviously I can't tell you otherwise, they'll, you know, drop the bomb on me here and now, but <laughs> but you know, she she she's not just sort of introduced simply to satisfy the appetite for what does she look like, what would she be like. Uh, she's she, lots of fantastic. She's absolutely fantastic. I, I know because I've done this before. Arriving into a show that's already set up, a second season of a show, is very intimidating because you you you've. You know, firstly, everybody knows each other, but secondarily, you feel like, well, the show worked the first time without me, so if it doesn't work now, then I feel like I'll probably bear a bit of the brunt of that. And I have to say, Lotta is com she was completely fearless from day one. She did something on day one, um, which is we were, we were literally, I think it was, it was either day one or day two of shooting, the, of shooting this, this season. 
and we had li we had just met in makeup. She, I guess, had just flown in, so I hadn't met her at any of the table reads. She'd just flown in. I met her in makeup. We had a chat. Then suddenly we were on the set. We we're doing the scene in front of the crew, and she did something which wasn't in the script, which is she smacked me on the ass at the end of one of her lines. And as she did it, I thought, "That's that is great. That is brilliantly <laughs> courageous." Firstly, to do with an actor you don't know very well, but secondarily, so perfectly what they were hoping that Anna would be like. You know, she's not like she's not like Mr. Jarvis at all. <laughs> How does the relationship with Peggy deepen or evolve? Um, well, it is. Uh, a, how does one answer this question without? telling you anything. That's actually what I'm thinking in my head is I don't know how to answer that question without giving something away. Uh, there is added depth. Uh, they obviously are not starting from zero um, and Peggy knows that Jarvis is someone she can trust and a confidant whilst not necessarily being uh, the number one draft pick for going on missions. Um, you know, I she I think she quite likes torturing him as well. So there's a sort of uh, a, a, a glee in her face as she makes me do things that I don't want to do. Um, and God bless Jarvis, he is he's game uh, and uh, ineffective for the most part. <laughs> Although, uh, again, I can't say anything else. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it's a very difficult question to answer because it would give away plot points and I'm, I can see Jeffrey sweating in the background. So <laughs> when you do your Jarvis voice, it's slightly different from your normal speaking voice. Are you trying to sound like Paul Bettany at all? No, I'm not trying to sound like Paul at all, no. Uh, I, I, uh, I just wanted to sound period. Yeah, like a period Englishman, a 1940s Englishman, which is a bit more clipped uh, than than I would sound. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I talked about this last year. I, my feeling is, because I, because I predate Paul, he should go back and revoice everything he's done <laughs> in order to fit in with me, uh, rather than the other way around. Would your Jarvis find Tony Stark's Jarvis creepy, or would he be touched by it? I'm not entirely sure how to answer that question. Your question may or may not get an answer okay. in the season. <laughs> one of the things that uh, I asked Haley was if the show were to get a third season, I think one of the interesting things that the show could do is each season be in a different location. Shoot it in London, you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> or Bora Bora. Could do right. Right. Yeah. Well, what, what are your thoughts on on the, the concept of each season sort of being in a different location and you know being able to do a season in London? Hawaii, Hawaii, or, or, or I love it. I love it. Uh, I think uh, obviously I don't write the show, but I think it would be tremendous if we could do a season in a different place uh, every time, and 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 obviously London would be a. A, a very obvious candidate for that, given that, you know, Peggy's English and Jarvis is English, it's sort of easy to see how that could work. And London, a lot of it still looks like it did in the 40s. So I, I, I personally think that that would give the show a rather interesting tweak, you know, that every season was in a different, different city. Uh, I don't write the show. Uh, I... I, I I'm very happy if we get a third season, wherever we shoot it. I like being in Los Angeles. It's warmer here than it is in London. Every time I speak to anyone at home, it's like, oh, it's so cold here. I want to stay there. So, <laughs> what's uh, Do we see more of the dynamic between Jarvis and Howard this season? And, uh, uh, well, um, you, I mean, you do see Howard and yep. Jarvis. Uh, do you see more of that dynamic? Uh, well, difficult to say because we haven't finished the season. Mm -hmm. um, you do see more. Uh, you do see. You do see more. And again, it's a question that's just difficult to. It's just difficult to answer without 
without unfortunately saying something that I will get fired for saying. <laughs> From when you were told about the season to what you guys are actually making, how much changed along the way? I wasn't really told about the season, so <laughs> nothing changed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I knew what everyone knew at Comic-Con, and I knew what everyone knew at Comic-Con 30 seconds before everyone at Comic-Con knew. <laughs> and then the extensive conversations between myself and the writer's room uh, went along the lines of two texts that were, how do you feel about working with the Flamingo? <laughs> um, well, one text. And then a follow-up, ha 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 That's pretty much all I knew about season two. And we, 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 you know, I'm sure if I asked, they'd tell me, but actually I quite like reading it like the audience. I quite like to sort of... They've, they've just sent us episode nine today. So I don't know how the show ends. I've got a kind of vague idea what happens, but I don't know. Well, from what I understand, you guys are filming two episodes at a time. Right. Um, so what's it been like? Did you do that last season? We didn't, do, we didn't do it last season on this, but in Britain they do it all the time. So I'm very accustomed to shooting two episodes, block shooting. It makes perfect sense. If you're in, let's say, this location, shoot two episodes at once. Then you don't have to, you know, move around quite so much. Uh, I, 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 my feeling is it happens not very often in the States, and so... There's been a bit of a head scratcher for some people, but I mean, it's only two hours of material, or an hour and a half if you take out all the commercials. It's not, you know, it's like a movie, isn't it? There's a certain kind of alchemy that you have with Haley that shows on screen and off screen when we've seen you guys together. What's it, what's it been like to find that sort of special groove with another performer and be able to like have this like long distance run with her to be able to cultivate these characters? And it's pretty amazing. It's really amazing. I mean, I've been an actor for long enough to know. Firstly, I don't think chemistry on screen necessarily has much to do with chemistry off screen. I don't know that, that that's an equation. You don't have to be great friends and get on really well off screen in order for it to look exciting and interesting. In fact, sometimes when you don't get along very well, there's a sort of tension there that somehow was mostly, if that's a word, comes across uh, as it happens. Haley and I get on fantastically well, and it is a complete joy to go to work with that woman. I mean, she she's amazing. She, you know, she's carrying the show. She has all this action to do. She has endless dialogue. She's in more or less every scene, and she's always got a smile on her face. She's always kind to the crew. She, you know, we laugh our heads off. Uh, you know, we 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 tr have tried to share some of that. You know, particularly through that sort of dub smash thing that we we did. <laughs> you know, hopefully, it's, it's not manufactured in any way, we just have a really good time. And, and it really helps that, in my personal view, they write such beautifully elegant, fun dialogue for us, so it's, it's really enjoyable to learn the lines and come to work and try and do it as you feel they've written it, you know, we're not... Okay, that's not true, I do improvise quite often at the end of the scene but for the majority of the scene there's no improvise that you know for the actual stuff they're likely to use and then you audition something at the end in the hope that they might see something funny although I didn't invent a word which I think might have made it into the show <laughs> um, but by and large what they write is so brilliant that there's nothing to improvise you know uh, and 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 right from day one they just somehow knew how to write for us together uh, it's without any question the highlight of the show for me. Did you have a favorite? Have one more question. Mine's not. Mine's a fun question. It's not about the show. <laughs> I was gonna. I, was, I just wanted to know. Did you have a favorite of the dub smashes, or a song that you wanted to do that didn't? That didn't. Oh man, we did every, something we didn't want to do. We, I think we did every song humanly imaginable. Uh, I. Uh, I honestly, for me, I thought the one with Chris was the, the, the end. I, I thought it was the final word in dub smashing full stop and they should just take the app away. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but Clark and Chloe found a really sneaky way to keep it going, which uh, turned out to be incredible. We raised something like, what, $155,000 did we raise? I thought we might raise three. When they first said this is what we're suggesting, I, I almost died of embarrassment because I thought we would make nothing whatsoever. We and we've raised so much money for charity. It's been and and 
kind of, you know, it all was completely organic initially. It, it, we never set out and thought about it. We it just happened over Comic Con and then turned into the, to this thing that now has done a lot of people a lot of good. And I've never really been involved in anything like that. So uh, I, I have to say it's one of the things that I'm proudest of in 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 my life. You know that we were able to do that. And also I think people seem to enjoy it. You know. Uh, I did have to invent a really, really, really terrible dance in order to win. Um, but there you go. That's the way it is. Actually, if we could take one off, that would be the... Which isn't really a proper dub smash, but that dance that I did, I wouldn't perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> that one go. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thank you.